they finally had it. European gas exchange prices have increased 65% in the last 36 hours, making the most rapid lapse in the market. Only one coke in the great wheel of the global economy has been lost, the gas compressor unit, JCU, Nord Stream 1. After that, second and third cokes were directed for schedule maintenance, decreasing gas flow for 42%. The burgers got nervous and suggested Gazprom hurry with maintenance. Alas, one of the units is located in Canada, at the sole plant of the German concern Siemens. Due to the late return of gas compressor units from repair by Siemens, Germany, completion of the period time between overhaul of GCU and identification of an engine malfunction, according to Rostock Nozo order for temporary prohibition of activities, compressor station Bartova currently must use only three gas compressor units. Gazprom's response blew up the whole stock market, while Canada only shrugged. Due to the interracial sanctions, they cannot let equipment out of Montreal. That is because gas compressor units are developed on the basis of the Rolls-Royce aircraft engines, thus considered dual-use goods. Another factor worsens the situation. Canadian authorities imposed direct sanctions on Gazprom. While the Germans were fussing in an effort to get explanations from Canada, Gazprom continued mocking panic in crowd at the Petersburg Economic Forum by informing through the relevant sources. Five currently functioning GCUs will run out of resources in 208 days, meaning 5,000 more hours and that's it. Compressor station Bartova would stop its work according to all technical safety regulations. Western experts started to collect last month's gas market news, gradually getting frightened. It turned out that Russian gas has been running out for a month and a half already. Firstly, Gazprom cut off Yamal European pipeline by imposing sanctions against Europol gas company owner. Then, Ukraine played its part by refusing to accept gas at the one of the two checkpoints in Sokranovka. The last line via Suja is overloaded, barely pumping a miserable 42 million cubic meters per day. Also, has been learned that due to the annual maintenance of the pipeline, Nord Stream 1 will be stopped for two weeks meaning a fallout of approximately 70 cubic meters per day. Then routine maintenance is scheduled, and after that, as a dessert, full stop of the compressor station. And this is in the middle of a busy season, when warehouses are being filled for the winter. Also, prices are rising madly, has begun chasing around for substitution. The remaining Ukrainian corridor is overloaded, Using the Amal Europe pipeline is impossible thanks to an endless isolance of Poland who seized Russian gas companies' activities and equipment just like a pirate. Turkish Stream, given its small capacity, is also almost overloaded and its logistics wouldn't allow delivery to northwestern Europe. The worst thing West experts understood, Gazprom will not move a finger to resolve the Nord Stream 1 problem. It is fully satisfied with the situation when the company pumps less and gets extra profits because of high prices. The clocks are ticking. Germany and other countries' gas storages, depending on Russian gas, are only half full. Some of them are 90% emptied in hope to get American liquefied gas. Alas, the USA's largest liquefied natural gas production plant just announced three months, not three weeks, closure due to a recent explosion. While well, stars aligned on the Russia Fails flag, an Earth Fair beastie has come to visit. Even if Germans would succeed in begging Canada for sanctions cancellation on CMOS, time lock, the dismantling of stopping GCU, transportation to Montreal and back won't allow them to get enough gas for winter. Citizens will be supplied, but several interesting branches would be shut down. Turbines cannot be substituted. Gazprom is developing its own units in collaboration with Chinese allies hesitantly and intermittently, but the equipment itself will be put into operations only with Siberia Power 2, by applying according to the crucial agreements, meaning it would take two years at least. But the problem is already there, and the old world doesn't have much time. If they curb the appetite for gas in summer, maybe there is a chance to fill storages up to 75%, not more, by the 1st of October if they manage to find resources. An accident at the American factory Freeport isn't just an accident. It overheated Asian markets, on which GCU are very high priced, and markets offers for them are being intercepted literally in the sea. European Union is left with scraps. Whilst Gazprom don't have a single worry, 
this monopolist is satisfied. At the Petersburg Economic Forum that took place yesterday, Alexei Miller indifferently shrugged and suggested the easiest way to escape the gas crisis. Nord Stream 2 is ready, compressor stations are the news and the pipe is full. Cancel the sanctions and we will give the green light tomorrow. Once their suggestion was announced, both parties from the German governing coalition hold. Especially loud were the green, letting Scholz know that his chancellorship would be over if he dared to mention Nord Stream 2. The stalemate. However, the most depressing news came from the USA. The Wall Street Journal informed, after an accident at the gas liquefied plant in Texas, the cost of raw materials and the market has fallen by 17%, which immediately reflected on Biden's rating, the lowest one for all the time of the institution of the presidency in the USA. It rose by 4%. So, Europe has nothing left but tears to shed, as this measure will be used by the White House till the last drop of, of gas. Congress immediately introduced a proposal to reduce GCU exports and to expand concessional lending for the blue fuels advanced progressing manufacturers, fertilizers in the first place, and to cut internal prices for the customer. So, the situation is hilarious. There is no way for Gazprom to find a substitute for the most complicated unit in the mining sector, namely high-powered gas turbines. Specifically, they just don't want to. The company is silent and doesn't have an intention to calm the market down with cheerful announcements. It wouldn't buy from another turbine supplier, American GE, on principle, while Siemens is bound by contract's obligation to perform the ongoing repair of the supplied equipment. Leave the Germans alone with their efforts to butter Canada. The production of Russia's own units, which have just gotten project documentation, will be started at the end of the next year, and there is no need to expand and accelerate the process. Firstly, the turbines are being made for specific projects. Secondly, Europe has bought us with an endless chatter about its intention to refuse Russian gas. The seventh sanction package is already a work in progress. Washington would go above and beyond to achieve its implementation, break the Russia-Europe connections and dry the letter one up. Being an economic rival with American industry, is a project which has no sense anymore. Why would Gazprom or other raw materials experts want to base an economic strategy on a dying, filled with piracy, lawlessness, hatred and Russophobia sector? Smart people prognose Europe will be broken in a year, and Gazprom's reputation as a reliable supplier is still intact, penalties are not a threat. On the contrary, the blame for the gas pumping shutdown is fully on the manufacturer, the Germany concern. These sanctions fuss demonstrated the absence of something useful in the heads of the West politic public, which was warned by Bloomberg's experts back in March 2020, in the long article on the subject of the Nord Stream 2 closure. Just think it over, deliveries via Ukraine may be paused any moment, equipment of the Nord Stream 1 is worn out, capital repair of the whole gas compressor station is scheduled for the 2023. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Rest all the hopes on GCU may turn out to be a dangerous illusion. They didn't listen. Russophobia is a priority. Or a blind hope of Russia's failure in an economic war. Very smart. Take a cookie for the analysis. Better learn from Vladimir Vladimirovich, a kindest person in the world. Without any serious counter-sanctions, without verbal or physical response to the humiliation of our country, he escalated the situation right to the point of compulsory psychiatry. He wrote Russophobias of the Russian Federation, orchestrated their self-legulation. Your humble servant believes in coincidences only up to a certain point. The first turbine has broken at the time of the NATO meeting in Rammstein. West partners didn't catch it and arranged the excursion to Kyiv the other day. The main consumers of Russian gas, the three stooges, President of France Macron, German Chancellor Scholz and Italian Premier Draghi, with a gypsy backup dance by Romanian President Klaus Iohannis, decided to piss off the guarantor once again. At that time, another two turbines of Nord Stream 1 have broken. A coincidence? Of course! And soon this plague will curse the rest of the Russian gas and oil pipelines, the uninsured cargo ships and port equipment and even trucks of the foreign production. 
don't want to maintain, repair and replace units on their contractual basis, no one will argue. We'll speak later, in winter, although at this rate these three funny bunnies wouldn't last long in politics. God help them! Let us know what you think about it. Leave your comments below and push the subscribe button.